Ramping up on some teams because we, we've got, what, about 20 minutes left of this transfer window. And once it's shut, it is shut. So there you go, 20 minutes and 35 seconds and counting. So we'll still be on air. And actually, I've got some breaking news for you because uh, Manchester United have confirmed the signing of Sofia Amrabat on loan. Good bit of business there? Very good. Um, top player, but it's exactly what they need. I mean, Man United at times, I watched them against Wolves, the following weeks, you could literally put, an, it was like a knife through butter in their midfield. So he comes in, he's everything they need just to shore him up, give him that um, support next to Casemiro because he's looked quite vulnerable at times. So um, real, real top player. I don't know about you, John, but I absolutely loved watching him <laughs> throughout the World Cup. We the followed him, yeah. all of us, didn't we? And, you know, Morocco did a really good job yeah, yeah. getting all the way yeah. to the yeah, semi-final. He was brilliant in the World Cup, I thought the... Um... He was disciplined. I thought his intercepting was brilliant. And not only intercepting balls, sort of, um, and then winning the ball back and making sure that he gave it to a Moroccan shirt. He never wasted the ball. Very disciplined. And I think he'd be a great signing for United. Well, they have a big game, don't they, coming up this weekend at the Emirates against Arsenal. And we're going to hear from Mikel Arteta, followed by Eric Ten Hag. Kieran, Nuno today. Good thing for them and for the club. Well, we're working together to find uh, the best possible solutions and um, we found them and um, I think the players are happy and, and the club in general, I think we did um, some good business as well. With Balogun, it's obviously a, a permanent deal mm. uh, and, and a good deal as well because Pure Profit, an academy graduate and I think a 17.5% salon clause as well well we didn't have uh, now space for him in the squad to give him the minutes that he needs and he did really well just uh, last year in um, in his long period you know and he's evolving the right way and he wanted as well the chance to continue developing his career he's going to a really good club they have huge experience on developing talent as everybody knows so really happy for him as well it's deadline day He's he was excited as the rest of us. <laughs> you should be tired. You've been doing that for, for many months. So uh, I think it's the end, uh, at least here in the UK. Not everywhere, but at least here. So, um, yeah, let's finish it in the right way. Mikel Arteta, deadline day. M-A-D-D, -D, mad. Is it going to be a mad one or a serene one for you? <laughs> For me, Serene, I don't have to do much more work. It's more get all the recruitment, everyone, the boys, trying to finalise a few things still today. And the other outs, obviously, because you did your business for ins early on. Yes. Can, 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 we, can you bear with us if I play a little game of stay or go? In what sense? Please come in, you mean? I don't expect nobody to come Stay in. or go? I From holding, stay or go? No, I, I'm not going to reply anything, you know that. So it's not stay or go, it's no. They are, there is nobody else coming in that we don't expect. That's what I can say. On stay or go, obviously not staying with you in this international break, but going on England duty, Eddie, are you pleased for him? So please, If someone deserves in this squad, that's, that's him as well. Um, an academy player that had uh, some moments, you know, when his pathway wasn't very clear and he had to fight it through and... I just love his mentality, his work rate, how much he loves this game and uh, and how hard he's fought, you know, to, to be recognised at that level in this country to play there. It's You have to be phenomenal at something and um, and I'm so happy for him. Do you take personal pride in, in the part you've played? In I think, well, I think everybody that's been involved in his development obviously feels extremely proud to be part of that journey with him, you know, and uh, so everybody that was here at the academy with him, everybody that has in that, been in that journey, his family for sure, they're extremely proud of him, so really nice moment for him. Manchester United, always a big game. How important is it that you put down a marker this early in the season with a, with a victory? Well, that's what we want, obviously. We know that the history between the two clubs and, and the games that we had in the past as well. Last year it was a, a really good example. So it's going to be an extremely competitive match, really a big battle in, on Sunday. And uh, obviously we want to, to come away from that with, with three points. Alex from the Premier League. Hi, Hi. On Manchester United on Sunday, as Gary touched on there, billed by many as a huge fixture, despite how early into the season we are just now. How much do you view this meeting as an early indicator of both clubs' credentials for the Premier League title? I don't know. I think it's that early in the season. You know, we all want to win games. We want to play the best possible way, and um, that is not going to dictate. But obviously, it gives you momentum. It gives you belief, 
and before the international break it's always very important to to finish well to to win your game and, and go back now in in september with another block of games before the the next one with a with a high yeah, both league fixtures last season between you and united were pretty gripping i think nine goals scored between you what is it about this encounter that makes it such a high scoring fixture well first of all the quality of the players obviously <laughs> there are a lot of offensive uh, top players in in the two teams and and they as well probably the the approach of of both teams the way they want to play um, there were some errors as well there involved um, which hopefully we can eradicate as well but um, normally it's very entertaining match yeah um, you remain unbeaten after three games seven points from nine a return only better by man city so far uh, you spoke though of your frustration at points lost in Saturday's draw against Fulham. How much do you feel that last season's title challenge has raised expectation around the club's ambitions this season for yourself personally and also for your fans? We raised the level in everything that we do every single year and we have to demand each other more and better and this is what we do. And when you see the reaction when you draw a match, I think it's a great indicator of where you want to be and the demands that you put um, to yourself. Finally, for me, um, you've been fairly experimental in your lineups in your opening games so far, compared to last season at least. So I just wonder, how happy are you with the effect that those changes have had on the team as a whole, and, and how happy are you with your players? Really happy. I said against Fulham, I'm watching the, after watching the game twice that we played ten times better. Uh, I don't know if it was six or ten, but we definitely played six or ten times much better. But this is about results, and one thing is to play really well, and they want to compete really well. And what we didn't do is we had to compete in certain moments the best possible way to do that. But play 10 times better. I reaffirm you again. Mikel, just on that, what is it that this formation that you played last week and this defence that you like so much that, that makes you play 10 times better? What formation is it? Well, you're, you're the four at the back, party at right back, and then you've got Benwer, Gabriel, and then Kiri at left back. What did you like so much about that? I think we discussed formations in a different way. In the other day, there were 36 different formations in the match. Against Manchester City, 43. So I don't know what formation we talk about. For me, it's something very different. Maybe for the wise that you look. No, no, but I'm, I think a, a lot of people look at the teams you picked and would say that the... the Back four you picked last season was so successful. Ah, the, the personnel is different, yeah. Yeah. So is there a chance that you could revert back to that for the Man United game on Sunday? Well, I played different against against Man Manchester City, and there were 43 different structures in different phases. Every morning I come from my house to Colney. Sometimes I leave at six, and I need to go in the windscreen because it's icy, and at six o'clock normally I go Finsley Road and then A41 because it's faster. Now, Finsley Road is 20 miles an hour, so sometimes I take a back door. But then I go on and then 25. But depending if it's a school ride, and that time, I take one exit. If it's after 7 o'clock, I take a different exit. And then I go. And one day I have a flat tire. What do I do? I have to replace it. Maybe I take a different road because the garage is there. So every game is a different story, guys. Different story. Okay, will Rasmus Hoyland be available to make his debut? Yes. So we had a, a good training week, and yeah. So tomorrow we have a final training, but he's doing well. He's responding well. So yeah, he will be available for Sunday game. We've seen Alte Biendi arrive. Will, will he be eligible to be involved on Sunday? And will anyone else potentially arrive and be available? He will. Um, he will be in the squad as well. Yeah. yeah. Alti, so happy. Now we have the, the keeper group. Um, uh, again, uh, it's uh, fully, fully there. We covered every position. So I think we have a very good keeper group uh, with uh, the arrival of uh, Alti. Is there a chance of anyone else signing in time to play on Sunday? What do you mean? Is there any? Obviously, United are looking at some other other options. Is there a chance any of them will be signed in time to play to on play Sunday? On Sunday? Uh, potentially, um, yes. Potentially, yes. Could be, eh, because. But then we have to re request it eh, by now. Eh? Does that mean Reguilon? Is he here? Like he is here. He trained. 
so he is he will be available for Sunday as well. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, just in terms of like we told about Amrabat um, and the <coughs> midfield option that that's moving close. Will that give you the squad that you, you, you know want? That? <laughs> well, I mean, that's, people people in uh, Florence <laughs> seem to think that's true. Oh yeah, uh, but there's so many rumours. <laughs> Yeah, but it's nice, eh? It's, eh? Yeah. But would would is that if you got that position sorted, would that give you the squad that you want? I think um, yes. We have done good business. Uh, we constructed a strong squad, and yeah, you know, we are ready to go into the fight. And it does that also mean that we've spoken a lot about Harry Scott McTominay's been mentioned a lot. Does that mean they are here? They are part of the squad. They have an important role to play. Yes, we. If you see the shadow, eh, and uh, it's tough. It's really condensed. Uh, when you see eh, last season, World Cup, crazy season. Eh, less, uh, the, the season takes longer. Eh, two weeks. We played the FA Cup final one week longer. We had a short break where we really condensed pre-season again. So we need numbers, but also need. Not only numbers you need, also the numbers has to be uh, have to be quality. And I think, yeah, with this squad we have the depth and we have quality players in, and uh, we can be variable um, in variety, variety systems. And yeah, we are happy with it. And yeah, but I said we are ready to go into the fight. Um, also, by in there, uh, what, what do you like about him? He'll be the first Turkish player to, to play for Manchester United as well, so a big moment for Turkish football fans as well. Yeah, we <clears throat> we followed him, we scouted him very intense, and yeah, we think he has the skills that he um, yeah, that he fit in, uh, fit in Man United, fit in English football, uh, that he that he has the skills. So yeah, we are really glad that we uh, that we signed him. Um, and yeah, we are confident uh, that he will make uh, a lot of progress um, in yeah, the coming period, uh, the, the coming years, and he will be a, a huge contribution to our game. Uh, and you mentioned Sergio Reguilón has trained with the club. What qualities will he bring in that position? Is he up to being thrown straight in and replacing um, at fullback immediately? Uh, he is very experienced player, a player for big clubs, play already a lot of games. Um, in La Liga, in Premier League, um, so yes, I think a very good background. Um, we have seen he can play very intense uh, football. Yeah, so we are happy. You know, a while uh, we had a problem uh, with Luke Shaw injured, Time Malaysia injured, yeah, for long term out. So I think yeah, we responded very well on that um, emergency situation. And, and Sofia Ambraba, I know he's a player you worked with at FC Utrecht. Uh, again, really a player who could make a, a difference this side. I can't tell eh? because I don't know if we can sign. Eh? So if we have news, we will uh, report it immediately. Uh, one more, if I, if I may. Um, Andre Onana, quite cryptic on, on social media about whether he might be playing for, for Cameroon uh, and coming back to the, to the side there after withdrawing from international football. Do, do you know any more about that? Because obviously the, the Africa Cup of Nations is in the Ivory Coast this year in, in January and there'd be an impact if he does play. I know everything about it, so of course we spoke about that situation uh, before we, we signed him and uh, we will be in good contact with Andre um, how to deal uh, how to deal with the situation. So, so is, he, is he able to play for Cameroon again? Uh, but I said I am in good contact with Andre and uh, we are on the same page, we know what to do and also um, yeah, we know how we constructed the squad, uh, how we can deal with it if, but as I said, we have to speak about uh, and then we will make a decision. Uh, last question in this section, PLP. Hi Eric, historically games uh, between Arsenal and Manchester United have been big games. What are you expecting from uh, Mikel Arteta's side and what have you made of what they've done to their squad this season? Uh, it's one of the biggest games in the Premier League. And how we really looking forward, of course, um, that fight, and uh, really always interesting games, intense games. Um, I think is very uh, two teams who really play offensive football. Uh, the, the right intentions, I would say. The audience is always uh, 
the big winner of that game. So, yeah, really looking forward to, to have that game. And just finally, the Champions League draw, what have you made of, of your group? And if you do get the additions that are hopeful for today, have you got the, the, the depth of squad to, to tackle four competitions? I think, yeah. Uh, but therefore we need, as you say, we need the depth uh, to uh, to go into the four competitions, but also uh, our players, the most of them are international players uh, for the nations, so they will go all over the world, so yeah, we have to cover that. We have to be prepared for that situation, that we always can put a competitive uh, team on the pitch. It's uh, quick, yeah. <laughs> just, just one final question, if I may. For this section? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of expectation on Rasmus Hoyland. Um, are you expecting him to make an immediate impact, or do people, fans in particular, uh, you and the coaching staff, have to be patient with him? Because there's a big focus on him, isn't there? It's a big spotlight. I think on, for every player, it's a big spotlight. At United, you have to perform. And so in every position and every player. Is he fit enough to start this weekend, would you say? Or is that too soon? Well, I, I think he can. he's ready to start. We're all really looking forward to this one. And I, I wonder how you see this, Karen, because I think it's quite a good opportunity to gauge where both teams are at because they haven't been that convincing this season. No. Um, I think Arsenal went big in the transfer window. There's that, that pressure, that expectation, right, go and do that next best thing of winning. Um, and that, for me, when I've watched them the last few games, they've played a little bit differently from last season. Last season, I thought they moved the ball so quick. It was rapid. It was just... I was so impressed with the intensity. This year, it feels a, a little bit slower, but a little bit more controlled. But I felt they've struggled to break teams down, even though they have scored. Um, but I, I expect them to have that intensity at home against Man United because, like I said in just a minute ago, Man United looked really vulnerable through that midfield. So if Arsenal really go for it with that pace at home, I think they could cause some big problems for Manchester United. But Man United as well are not playing well, but finding results. So you're right, both teams not in the rhythm, um, but two top teams really figuring it out. I mean, it's a sign of a good side as well, isn't it? When you can win not playing yeah, the best, mm. especially at the start of the season. But for Arsenal, I wonder, how do you think they're coping with being a team now that everyone wants to beat? Because it comes with a different sort of pressure, doesn't it? Well, expectation level, being at the top of the league for so many weeks. I think it was a record, actually, in the Premier League. They were at the top, leading the way. Um, great players. Saka, uh, Martinelli, Inketia back in the team, scoring goals, playing ahead of Jesus. Um, Rice, I think Rice makes them automatically better, stronger. You could arguably say that West Ham wouldn't have gone, did what they did last season without the influence of Declan Rice, so he's a brilliant signing. Um, defensively, Saliba, Gabriel, um, you know, they, they, they've, they've strengthened at the back. And I, I genuinely feel Arsenal will have another, another top four season. Not quite sure if they can topple Man City. Man City, they're just a different animal. Don't know if anyone can. Oh, they can call <laughs> on so many players. But I, I think Arsenal have to try. You know, they've, they've added to the group, as I said, um, Havertz as well. Um, so, and I, I'm like Karen, I think uh, Man United came back from 2 0 down last week to win 3 2, showed great character, spirit in the team. But they can't afford to start like that against Arsenal no. on the weekend. I mean, how, yeah. to, and, and also a peg back as well by Fulham, as you said. Neither team are really flying no. at the minute. But um, I don't think um, United can afford to go to the Emirates and, um, and concede two early goals. I think they'll get beat if that happens. Yeah, how do you see it in terms of Man United's perspective? Do you see it as really poor for going behind so early on, with two goals to nil? Or do you see it as, well, actually, they showed great character to come back? Which way do you look at it? Like I said, the, the, the story in the start of the season, I think Man United have been poor, but when you have players like Rashford, who's playing his more preferred position on the left, and you've got magical players that can just create something out of nothing, you've always got a chance, and that's why they've probably spent £1.5 billion since Alex Ferguson's, Ferguson's left. So um, I have to say it was, it was a great comeback, and again, Rashford at his best. It's, a, it's, it's like a flow of attack. I've been there. I went to up when you... I, I, I mean, I did the Coventry, and we ended up losing 4-2. Uh, 
it's waves and waves and waves of attack. And just naturally, you just drop, drop. It almost camped out on the edge of your 18-yard box. When that row, United get one back, they get two back. It's almost like it's inevitable they're going to get a winner. And I think that's what happened. I think they just caved in after a really great start at Nottingham Forest last week. Yeah, I mean, they've obviously, we're talk, talking about signings, obviously, because it's the transfer deadline. The window shuts very, very soon indeed, about just under 20 minutes to go. But the signing of Hoyland, I mean, this is a game that he could make his debut. He is fit enough to do so. Is it a game, do you think, the manager will start him in? Or is it too big a game to make your debut in? Uh, personally, I'd probably wait. Um, it's a, for me, it's a real, real big game. But, but then, if tactically you think he's fit and he's available, and I can have a target player. I've got a goalkeeper now that can play short and draw you in and Arsenal will press you because that's what they'll do and you can bang, skip it and go along to the target player. I'm sure John will know more about that <laughs> than me. But <laughs> if, if you have that option, I think it's a really good one. So it, it, I personally wouldn't, but if the manager, Ten Hag, believes tactically he can win us a football match and he's going to be our out, then he might play him. What's he paid for him? £72 Something like that? Yeah, a lot of money. A lot of money. How can you how can you buy a player? For I mean, that I'm sure much? the player would love to make his debut in a game like this, but it's well, whether he has the manager to. thinks he's ready. He'd be chomping at the bit to get going, to get started, score his first goal for Man United, go and show the supporters you're worthy of that price tag. I know you haven't got much to do to say as a player about the price tag, but he's very very highly rated by Ten Hag. He should be in the team, get in the team. Go, we need you. We need you right now at Arsenal. We need a centre forward to score us goals. We'll rush for the long side him, do you know? So I think the big question though, John, is if is Amrabat fit? Because I'd prefer mm. to play him. Personally, after seeing Man United's midfield the last few weeks. It's what they need. Yeah. If he's fit, I definitely would play him next to Casemiro. But whether he wants a centre forward in, <laughs> you're gonna back your centre forward, I, 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 I love it. I, I just think <laughs> big summer signing. Get do him it. in. Yeah. Get him in. What better place to go and start? Uh, other than other than Arsenal. Hello and welcome back. We're going to talk Manchester United next because while they did take all three points against Nottingham Forest, that is their worst ever start to any Premier League game. They conceded two goals in the opening four minutes, and it's not just that it's a it's a one off. It feels like it hints at deeper issues at, at Manchester United or it highlights a deeper issue. I'd, I'd say you know, with, especially with the sitting, I'd say to Man United fans, continue. Not don't just sit in. When you win, people saying, "Oh, you're only sitting when you lose." But they should. I, I was quite pleased to see them do that sitting when they lost. But like, you look at Man United, and it has to come from upstairs. There's too much going on. There's too much toxicity around the place. And what, the sooner they change that, I think on the pitch, because I think they've got the players. You can see the fact that they came back. Bruno Fernandes, whatever people say, he's literally lifted the team up and he's dragged them through. They've got that quality. But I just think that there's just so much. It's just too up in the air. Mm -hmm. Players just signing. You know what I mean? Everything was happening. Nothing seems to can go right for them. Mm. Even though they've gone 20 games on beating that Old Trafford. Mm. Nothing seems to go right for them because there's too much going on, I think. It needs to be sorted out upstairs. Yeah, it does feel like a, a club where you walk in on, on match day at Old Trafford it. and there is a lot yeah. Yeah, happening. Yeah, absolutely. I, was, I got trapped in the Munich Tunnel last year on a protest day for a home fixture. It was that fixture against Leicester, actually. Mm. And, yeah, it's, it is a place which is rumbling and... It, it sometimes is a little bit painful inside the stadium because you can feel it, even when they win. Like, yeah, OK, they got three points yesterday, but, you know, against a team like Nottingham Forest, if Man United are talking about the team they want to be, this big club, you know, that dominates the Premier League, mm. then yeah. no disrespect to Nottingham Forest, but you need to be beating them comfortably at home. And they're not doing that. They're 2-0 down. And on another day, if it's not a penalty, you know, they're not getting back in the game. They're maybe coming away with a point at best. So I think that it does highlight deeper rooted issues and exactly. so many of those goals you could dissect and say that's not good enough and those are things which you ask any of the old you know Manchester United players of, of, of old they would not do that the mistakes are basic footballing mistakes and they just haven't been addressed for the last four five six years and I think this is the the issue which is why we're not pointing at this game and saying yes they should be comfortably beating Nottingham Forest and yes this should be they shouldn't be making individual errors but it doesn't feel like a one-off. No, it no. feels like this is this is a longer-term pro uh, problem, as, as, as he was saying. Yeah, absolutely. And the and, and thing is, the build-up to this week's been dominated by former players saying, look, pull your finger out, you know, you need to wake up. 
you are sleepwalking towards a problem and then suddenly they go 2-0 down in the first five minutes. Initially, I did think to myself, is this a group of players not playing for the manager? But I think overall, United are affected by a couple of things. One is the the takeover. Mm -hmm. Is it happening? Is it not? It's affecting their transfer Absolutely. strategy. I would not have given the captaincy to Bruno Fernandes. I think Varane is the winning most player in that team. He should have had the captaincy. I think Fernandes is a fantastic player, but focus on playing because there are too many moments when the going gets tough where you are in danger of losing Fernandes. He's a very emotional player and he gets involved in incidents uh, with the referee and with other players that he shouldn't get involved in. And then, of course, you've got those basic mistakes in as well. That's three, not two, but sorry. Mm. Um, I, I just think that, there are far too many problems. That's a fascinating point about the captaincy because I look at that squad and I'm like, I don't know who the captain should be mm. because I agree on a certain level with Bruno Fernandes. I think he's a quality player and the stats back that up. He makes things happen. He scores, he assists. But Liverpool away last season, 7-0. He threw the towel in. And as a Manchester United captain, can't be doing that. Mm. And that carries on through. <laughs> That's you. That's who you are. And I think that moving forward, I mean, there was so much noise around Harry Maguire. And, and you know, I, I feel for Harry Maguire. I don't think he's had the professional support he is owed for being you know, diligent in this whole difficult process for himself. But I think that looking at that squad, I'm like, I, I get what you're saying about Varane, but I don't even think Varane looks to me like a captain I, I, in terms of the way he plays. I think all the players are not scared, but there's too much noise around the club for anybody to take it by the scruff of the neck and move it forward in the right mm -hmm. direction. It, it's, it's a tough time there. Well, really I would say with, um, with Bruno Fernandes um, and, and, and the captaincy is that it, he, is, he is somebody that... Um, with the passion and the way he drives the team, you just feel like if they could get rid of everything that's going on around that place and get, the, get everything sorted, the recruitment, the management side, all that stuff, he just needs players around him, mm. for me. Whether, whether he's the captain or he's, he's not a captain, he needs players around because you we can see... some great captains. Did they, that, you know, Tony Adams was mm. a fantastic captain. Yeah. You know, you've had a number of other, other yeah. captains for England and for Arsenal. Um, do they need other things, or are they players who lead with the armband or without the armband? Well, the thing is, Tony was obviously a captain led by example with what he'd done on the pitch, the way he carried himself. Obviously, that's the captain that we all know, the, the, the upstanding guy, the one that doesn't do things like what you mentioned at Liverpool. I could never dream of him doing that, someone like Roy Keane. I could never dream, dream of them players doing that. But in the current climate, the way he's playing, and people seem to give the captaincy to the best player, the most influential player, He's somebody that, when you watch how he plays, he looks to me like he's very frustrated. He needs better players around him, mm. much better players around him, players of a, the same stature and higher, so you can hold him to account yeah. as well. I don't think there's many players in that dressing room that can say too much to him, even though you can see Varane's won a lot more than him. But I just feel that he's somebody that's got it because he's the biggest personality in there. He's not afraid to speak. He comes out and speaks all the time after games. And I just feel that, his performances as well is is what's got him that. Yeah, I and agree. He does, he does those things. I think he had better players. He might be a different player. But how do you think his body language, because he shows negative body language when somebody's not on the same page as him. If he plays a through ball and no one's on the end of it, if no one gives him the ball, his body language is negative. Mm. And I don't think you can have that as a yeah, captain. That, that's, that's not me not saying he's a good player. Yeah. He's a good player. But, well, those are the things, but it, how does that then affect you? Well, if my does, body language is bad, me. it affects you. That will you. affect me. And then it affects it, we, yeah, and you. That would have affected me. Yeah. yeah. Would, like, would you have ended up having a row on the pitch? Probably would have had a, a row. <laughs> Definitely that, on the training ground. The captains ground. I had would yeah. not put you in that situation. No, would never put you in that, that, in that situation. Look, mm. there's a lot to be, to be fixed at Manchester United, as you said. It's a place where there, it does feel there are fault lines running throughout it. And they may yet be able to... To get past them, they've got Arsenal up next. It's going to be fascinating to see how that one goes next weekend. Should we bring the mood down and talk a little bit about Arsenal? You're not no, too despondent. No, it's only a draw against yeah, Fulham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, did it, but having taken the lead in that game, mm -hmm. you know, you go behind really early on. You think, right, fine, we'll, we'll play our way back into it. This should be, mm. you know, don't, which, let's which lose our did, head. Yeah. We did it, but that to concede that equaliser. Is that what will make it all sit feel well, very flat? That's pr probably, yeah. Um, but, and, and it's early in the season. It's something that you want to... If it's going to happen, it happens now, so as people can look back and see, right, what are we doing? What's la lacking concentration? Yes, the manager's moving things around, certain players not playing that fans want playing. But I'd still feel that we showed enough in that game where you say, OK, we've got that about us, but the lack of concentration, the conceding of goals early in games is a big problem at me, for me at the moment because... If I'm any team coming up against Arsenal now, I'd say, OK, let's start fast. And then at the end, let's stay in the game if it gets to the end. Let's stay in the game 
and then let's see because they're conceding goals as well. So I think they're very, it's, it's being, being one of the teams that's meant to be up there, meant to be challenging. There's, there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. And I think, still feel he's trying to find things out. You know, Thomas Party in that inverted. What's going to happen Where with... Where stand on that, though, Thomas Party at right back? Well, I can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get an extra man inside there, you know, so as you can keep the, keep the play moving, another midfielder in there. You know, but then when Zinchenko comes, then you've, then you've got to... Obviously, then Declan Rice, who likes to play on the left. There's a lot of things that he's going to have to... Because Zinchenko, is he going to come in? Is he going to play... White, um, Saliba, Gabriel, and, and, and Zinchenko when he comes back. Is it party and, and Rice? So there's things that I think fans would maybe like to see go back to a kind of bit of normality. But I think that if you're going to try something, then you try it at this stage of the season, see how it works. Because I think last season, at the end of last season, he was starting to use party in that position. Not sure it's working too much in respects of the fans. I don't mind it in dropping in there. But I believe that um, our, our biggest worry is concentration just now, because we've got the quality, we've got the, got the ability, yeah, it's concentration. Look at, look at those fixtures, though. Manchester United, then Everton, then it's the North London derby, mm. then Bournemouth and yeah, Manchester this is the, City this is the Premier League, before the man. international break, Chelsea on the other side of it. I mean, that is... That's, that, I know it's the... But you can have a, you can have a more comfortable run of fixtures. You can, but, like, the thing is, is that Arsenal, with the monies, we, the monies we've spent and the players we've brought in, the, the attitude of the team, the attitude of the manager, we're not bothered about the fixtures. It's about getting to that next game and making sure that you don't lose it and putting the kind of performance where you don't lose it, it worst ways, you know what I mean, you don't lose it, and then you win it because we're in a different mindset now. Do you we think, can't look at them teams and worry. I was saying about think, Newcastle earlier. Yeah. We've, this is where Arsenal are. Do you think Party will play it right back in those games? Um, I, think, um, I, I think that Mikel, he might go with it, but I'd probably would pr get, I'd get the back four back in with Ben White and, and Saliba and and Gabriel uh, and, and Zinchenko, then, then Zinchenko inverts. But then what happens with Declan Rice? Is Declan Rice on the right side? I know he prefers the left, but I think that this is the time to experiment. Let's see how it goes. If it's not, then you, he can go back, to, go back to what he does, 4-2-3-1 or wh whatever he wants to do, 4-3-3. Three, three. But I, I don't mind it at the moment. Because, again, it's like when Arsenal draw, it's like everybody's like a downer for everyone. We've only <laughs> drawn the game. We've drawn the game. We haven't lost the game. God. But if it had been a late equaliser scored by Arsenal, it would feel a lot different. It would have been, is, yeah. And I was, I was kind of like you were a little myself. in my house. Yeah. I was having myself because <laughs> we got to two one, and then Paulina scored, so it shut me up. So Michael Arteta experiment. Alors que se passe-t-il Le buteur Hakim Ziyech est resté au sol.